Well, my name is John Walker. I'm 87 years old now. And I was sexually abused by my father and one of his friends when I was a teenager. And I had all the symptoms of people who've been abused, unnecessary, unwarranted anger, the depression, the isolation, and they affected my life, my career, because I had no people skills from my parents. As a matter of fact, when I went to a therapist to uh, explore a family of origin because of the behaviors that I had, I wanted to know where they came from. This therapist at one point said to me, have you were you, were you sexually abused by your father? And everything came back in technicolor. It was just blew my mind I, because I completely repressed it for 45 years because I was in my early 60s when I went to see him. And I then began to look for resources and it was very difficult to find any. But then I volunteered for a rape recovery center here in uh, Salt Lake City. And during uh, volunteer training, the volunteer coordinator said, well, there's a poster out here about recovery for male survivors. And I looked at it, and it was for weekends of recovery to be held at Alta. So I got in the car and drove up there. But I almost didn't go in. You know, I was really afraid of what might happen. But I finally got the courage to go in, and I did. And the minute I walked in there, I had finally found a home because I was with people who understood me and I understood them and sorry if I get a little emotional about this but growing up homeless I felt like I'd finally found a home. Through working there the first thing that was pointed out to me that yeah I was deluding myself by saying that I was, was a solitary person but not a loner. I was, in fact, a loner. Uh, I kept finding out things about myself and, and better ways of coping with life. And one of the things I found out uh, that was really important was getting in touch with my inner child, which I'd never done before. I'd, you know, in, in my isolation, I'd left my inner child behind. One of the exercises at one of the weekends of recovery was to write a letter to my inner child. And through that, I began to get some self-esteem and, and some idea of who I really was and not this, this person that had been created uh, by the abuse. I've attended several weekends of recovery now and every time I go, I learn something new about myself and about my behavior. And that's why I keep going back to these weekends of recovery because I know I'm always gonna learn something new and useful. As a result of this, I've become much more assertive, and that has really been important in, in a number of ways in my relationship with, with my wife. She doesn't always like it, but <laughs> it's, it's the way it is. I also uh, volunteered for uh, hospice for, uh, for 20 years as, and went and sat with the patient while the caregiver got out for two hours. And I found this to be very rewarding. And because of my experience at Weekend of Recovery, I was able to go into these encounters with a completely open mind and, uh, and be assertive and not try and take over, but, but do what was, what was necessary to do at the particular time. So today I lead a life of a much greater ease than I did before Weekends of Recovery. Uh, weekends of recovery are not for the faint of heart. It requires a lot of work and it may indeed require a lot of pain. You have to learn to be introspective and uh, really analyze yourself and look at your problems and be serious about solving them. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade my experience at weekend of recovery for anything because it's been a, literally a lifesaver for me.